Welcome to this OTAN presentation on Moodle. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And, oh, I'm actually on the wrong slide. Let me go back. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we are here this morning uh, for Introduction to Moodle Part 1. Uh, my name is Anthony Burek. I am a project specialist with OTAN. Um, I've uh, had the pleasure on, uh, of being on a number of webinars, I think, with many of you over the last few weeks. So I appreciate your attendance at um, our webinar today. So again, Introduction to Moodle Part 1, and we're here at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, uh, or actually Savings Time. Anyway, um, here's my contact information. Um, you can always email me, aburek at OTANUS. If you are on Twitter, please follow me. I'll follow you back, at, uh, at OTANAnthony. And as Melinda mentioned, and I know a lot of people ask about the um, handout today and other materials, um, eventually they will be on our OTAN COVID-19 field support page. Um, we're a little behind in getting things up there, but we will try to get them up there as soon as we can. Here's a beautiful graphic about OTAN. We're, um, uh, normally OTAN does lots of great things, and um, in the moment we're also doing a lot of great things as well. Um, I do encourage you, if you haven't spent a lot of, a lot of time on our website, OTAN.us, to please visit our website. We have a lot of resources there. And we also have a dedicated COVID-19 field support page as well. Uh, we are trying our best to keep up with what's happening uh, with the field. We know that there, um, the last three and four weeks and now going on a month has been pretty tumultuous for the adult education field. Um, and for everyone really, but for us in particular, um, so we've been doing our best to try to keep the field apprised of uh, resources to use uh, and other information uh, that y'all need. So um, please visit that page. And when we visit the OTAN website, I'll be sure to show you where that is as well. Okay, so here's our agenda for the next uh, uh, bit of time here. Um, I want to just briefly introduce Moodle if you're not familiar with Moodle and um, kind of focus on this question about uh, should I use a website or an LMS? Um, and then we'll talk about the OTAN Moodle site um, and the URL is there, adultedcourses.org. We'll talk about how to get there from the OTAN uh, website. Uh, and then we'll cover the basics. So we're really, uh, my intention, at least with part one today, was to really focus on um, the basics, you know, assuming that maybe a lot of folks haven't um, visited Moodle before, they're not really sure, you know, they haven't been to the adult ed courses site before, um, they're really maybe thinking about using an LMS for the first time, maybe they don't have a lot of personal experience um, as a student in an online course. So um, my orientation at the moment is to start at the beginning. Um, and I hope, you know, depending on everyone's level of understanding of Moodle and LMSs and such that um, we'll all bear with each other today um, as we cover the basics. Um, tomorrow, we'll talk about tomorrow later. Um, tomorrow, um, we plan to do, uh, you know, once we have kind of that basic understanding of, of Moodle and what we have set up for the field, um, we'll dive into some more, um, I guess you could call intermediate or advanced topics tomorrow. But today is really kind of focusing on the basics. Um, so my plan is to kind of do a little show and tell for about the first 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to shift into a practice activity, um, and hopefully this will work for everyone. Um, we, well, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, and I also want to talk uh, near the end of today, um, we'll circle back to the Adult Ed Courses site and tell you a little bit about some of the resources that are there already, that um, if you are ready, you can go ahead and um, grab those courses or copies of those courses from OTAN and get started uh, tomorrow or next week whenever you'd like. And then at the very end, we'll talk about uh, what the plan is for tomorrow. We'll go a little bit more in depth on that. Oh, I'm sorry, and I've already messed up. So um, I, I also want to introduce to you um, two of the uh, presenters that are co-presenting with me today. Um, the first person uh, is my colleague at OTAN, Marjorie Olavides, um, and she is basically our Moodle administrator. So what that means is that um, questions and requests for courses that come into OTAN, Marjorie is our point person on that. 
um, and she fields a lot of questions from the field on uh, on Moodle. So um, at some point, probably soon, you will be in touch with Marjorie. Um, again, she uh, does a lot of work behind the scenes to manage our Moodle site and also to assist the field with the Moodle, re Moodle requests. Marjorie, do you want to say hi or chime in at the moment? Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also want to introduce Blair Roy, um, who's going to be helping out as well. So Blair um, actually previously worked at OTAN. Um, she's retired, but we have her back as a subject matter expert. And um, when Blair was working at OTAN, she did a lot of Moodle presentations for the field. So actually, some of you might in the past have been trained by Blair on Moodle. Um, there's probably a few folks in the room who uh, attended one of Blair's trainings. Um, so Blair's going to help us out today as well. Um, Blair, do you want to say hi? Hi, y'all. I had to say that for Melinda. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. It's always fun to uh, be with the OTAN gang. Thank you. Thank you, Blair. So um, Marjorie and Blair are also going to help out with, in the Q&A as well. So if questions come up, um, they will be um, able to help out with the, with the answers to those questions as we're rolling along here. And again, if you do have questions at any point, um, please put them in the Q&A and we'll go ahead and address them. Okay, so let's start with a, kind of just a basic understanding of what Moodle is. So um, for the purposes of today, we're going to go with um, the definition or the, um, the Moodle is a learning management system or an LMS. And I grabbed the Wikipedia uh, definition of an LMS. So as you can see here, an LMS is a software application for the administration, documentation, tracking, reporting, and delivery of educational courses, training programs, or learning and development programs. So um, probably in the last month or so, you've heard about a lot of different tools that are out there. And I would say that you know, LMSs in general are sort of on the more advanced end of the tools that you might want to use in your online instruction. Um, it's a very powerful software application. It can do many things, and that's what it. And that is what is attractive to many teachers, right? Is that um, it's not just one particular tool that does one thing, but in an LMS you can do many different things, um, and that, that sort of attracts people to using it uh, as a part of their teaching. So. I think a lot of us should ask first, though, again, in the, in the last month or so, because we've heard about so many different tools and so many different possibilities for organizing our online instruction. So I think we all should ask the question, so should I use Moodle? Like, is that going to be my best tool in the moment, right? So um, there are other LMSs that are out there, and you probably have heard about some of them in the past few weeks, Canvas, uh, Google Classroom. Um, actually, Melinda just did a two-part presentation on Google Classroom. Some of you might have been in that one as well. Uh, Schoology is another one, Blackboard, Edmodo, and others. There are many possibilities for an LMS. Um, Moodle is one of them. Um, and so, uh, so there's that. So if I'm looking for an LMS, Moodle would be a good choice. Um, so then maybe you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, maybe the LMS is too much right now, right? It's too much for me to organize. It's too much for my students to get into. So maybe a simpler choice would be just a, what if I just created a website, right? Uh, maybe a Google site. Uh, some, we've heard about other uh, providers out there, Weebly, Wix. There are others, um, other programs to go with in terms of organizing a website. Um, we've also done a presentation on Google Sites as well. So that might be another option too. And then maybe um, I don't use a website or an LMS, you know, at all, like either one of them. Like right now, we're just so um, at the beginning of my, on, you know, of our online instruction that maybe just using something like a combination of Zoom for web conferencing, so meeting your students online, and maybe just a texting app like Remind where I can still send out assignments or links or whatever. Um, maybe that's another option that I could go with at the moment. So um, I think this is, you know, again, this is sort of a great opportunity to think about what is going to be the best choice for what I'm trying to achieve. And so if you, um, if you do use Moodle, um, the nice thing, again, because it's so powerful, is that you don't have to make it all, you know, 
crazy and souped up and everything, right? You could use it um, almost like you would be, almost to use it like you would like a website, right? So maybe you just want to share, for example, like links to other resources with your students. Maybe you have some files um, that you would like to share with your students, you know, Word documents, PDFs, PowerPoints, what have you. Um, you can still use Moodle to do those things, right? You can make it as simple or as complicated as you would like. So um, the thing that I really like about an LMS choice, though, in this case, is that even if I start off very simply and very basic, we can slowly ease into um, the really powerful interactive features of a, of a learning management system, right? So we can add discussion forms if we want. We can add assignments if we want. We can add quizzes if we want. We can add a whole host of features into an LMS. So again, you know, you make it as simple or as um, advanced as you would like, and you can also kind of um, uh, sort of graduate your your movement into the LMS, right? Keep it very simple to start off with. And then as everyone is getting comfortable in Moodle, then we start thinking about other types of things that we want to do in the LMS. Okay, it's very flexible that way. And I really think, again, you know, compared to some other choices, like if we just went with the simple website, for example, it probably wouldn't go beyond the level of, you know, the, the links and the files and such. I mean, you can, you can add certain interactive features into a website, but um, I think really, you know, if you're thinking about really bringing that interactivity into your course, your classroom, well, sorry, your online classroom, then, um, you know, think about it, think about an LMS. We do want to point out, however, that students in this case, and probably for other LMSs as well, will need to create accounts. So sometimes that's a stumbling block for teachers and students, but we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so um, where do we find the OTAN Moodle site? So I'm going to turn on my animation, sorry, my annotation tool. So if you go to the OTAN website, which is OTAN.us, there are two ways to get to adult ed courses from here. So we have a series of tabs across the top. So you wanna look for the resource tab, open up that drop down menu, and then we have this item right here, California Adult Education Courses. So if you click on this link right here, this will take you to, to adult ed courses. We're looking down on the right hand side of the screen over here. We do also have a dedicated button, CA Adult Ed Online Courses. So if you click on this button, that will also get you to adult ed courses. Okay. So this will bring you to the OTAN Moodle site, California Adult Education Courses. And you could also just type that address directly into your browser, adultedcourses.org. Um, I will mention that, um, oop, let me turn that off. Um, I'll mention that um, it's, uh, it's free to create an account on our Moodle site, so there's no cost. Um, anyone can create uh, an account on our site. Teachers and students are both free to do that. And um, yeah, so adultedcourses.org. Um, and it should look like uh, this when you come to that, uh, when you come to the website. So again, as a teacher, you basically, um, when you create your account, you basically have two choices in terms of the direction that you'd like to go. So um, we have on the adult ed courses site, we have many developed courses in a variety of uh, subject areas. So ESL, ABE, ASE, uh, citizenship. Um, and you are basically free to make copies of those courses and put them into your own personal uh, Moodle account. So, um, and then once you get copies of those courses in your Moodle account, you're free, you can use them as is. You're free to do any editing to the courses that you would like. Um, it's really up to you in terms of how you would like to, uh, how you would like to use that course. So that's one choice to make. Another choice to make is you could just say, well, you know what, I just want to start from scratch. I want to build my own kind of course for, you know, my students' needs. So OTAN can also give you a blank course shell. 
And then once you have the blank course shell, we'll take a look at what that looks like basically in a, in a few minutes here. Uh, but once you have that blank course shell, you can, you're free to do with it whatever you would like. You can add links, you can add files, you can create the assignments, the quizzes, you can add discussion for whatever you would like to do, the choice is up to you. So basically you just wanna think about, okay, is there something that maybe um, OTAN can provide me kind of off the shelf as it were, that I could, you know, with a few adjustments here and there, I could just use as is, or do I want to um, just kind of start with a blank shell and build it as, you know, build it, build it the way that I would like it. So you have both of those choices available to you. Um, you just have to decide, you know, which direction you'd like to go in. I will mention two um, because sometimes people get confused. So let me go back to the OTAN website for a second. So on the OTAN website, I don't have it here, unfortunately, but um, up in this upper right-hand corner of the website, um, there's an option to, uh, to join, um, to become a member on the OTAN website. So what you do is you go ahead and cr uh, fill out a form and create an account. Um, and then for example, like you use that account to register for these webinars, okay? But when you get to the adult ed courses page, that has a separate login. It's not the same login as your OTAN um, dot us membership account so just be aware that the two at the moment are not linked um, you have to create separate accounts for on the OTAN webpage uh, website sorry and on the California adult education courses website okay they're not linked we do have a plan I think in the future to link the two but um, that's uh, in the future okay so just make sure that you create two separate accounts um, for those Two different websites. Okay. So, um, just in terms of training, um, normally, in, in under normal circumstances, we usually come out and do a three-hour face-to-face training. Um, we are not in normal circumstances, so we are we have moved the operation online. Um, however, just so you know, we're currently building a self-paced training course covering the basics that we're going to talk about today. And again, once you have your account on the Adult Ed Courses site. You can enroll in that self-paced course. And at, towards the end of today, we'll talk about how you can enroll in that course. And then you can refer back to um, the material that we covered today and also what we're gonna talk about tomorrow as well. It also um, has some exercises in there so you can practice um, using your own Moodle account. And then we've also added a number of videos as well. So if you want to also watch those short videos, on a variety of topics that we're gonna talk about. Um, we also have this, um, some videos in that self-paced course as well. And I was gonna say something else and I can't remember, but that's okay. Um, oh, just to say, just to point out again, um, it's currently, it's, it's kind of, you've heard the phrase, um, building the plane as you're flying it. So we're kind of in that, <laughs> in that stage at the moment. So you may enroll in that course today or tomorrow and it has um, a certain look to it. But don't be surprised over the next week or so if you, um, when you come back into the course in the future, if more things all of a sudden are there. Um, don't be, you know, don't be alarmed or anything like that. We are trying to add more information into the self-paced course that you can use for your own training at home. Okay, um, Blair, Marjorie, let me just stop at the moment. Let me pause. Do we have any questions or concerns at the moment? Or are we good? a couple of questions in chat but um we got those so i think you're good okay fantastic thank you okay so um let's talk about getting started so um and we did um, i hope that folks um when you registered for the uh, webinar today um you noticed in the email confirmation that we sent back to you that i asked if each of you could create an account um if you didn't already have one um, if you don't have one at the moment, don't worry. We're going to give you a pause later to, um, if you need to create an account, um, you can still do that. Um, but hopefully sometime soon, if you haven't, um, just make sure that you create an account there. Okay, so let's talk about the students, right? So the first step is we have to make sure that all of our students also uh, have uh, a working email account in order to register, right? Having an email account is a condition of being able to register um, on the adult ed courses site okay 
So if you, and I'm sure you have students who, you know, don't have email, don't know what email is, you, you know what that, you know, you know what we're talking about here. Um, please don't, don't go to the trouble of designing a whole like, okay, here's an introduction to email lesson that I need to know. There are many, 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 many resources that are out there. These, that people have already gone to the trouble of creating uh, videos, um, step-by-step step instructions, an explanation of what email is. Um, GCF Learn Free is a site that I think a lot of people are familiar with. They have a great series of um, instructions on email and how to register for email and what email is and all that. So please go to one of those sites instead and use the resources that are out there. Um, on the OTAN website, we do have an OTAN resource guide for COVID-19. Um, I can show you where that is later. And on the first page, we actually have a series, or sorry, a list of sites that you can visit for those kinds of uh, resources and information. So please don't start from scratch. There's so much that is out there that you can, um, that you should use with your students. Okay. I know that um, I'm, a, I'm an ESL teacher by training, and so I know that um, sometimes we're very dogmatic about it and we're like, oh, well, we're gonna do everything in English, you know, from start to finish. And I would like to kind of gentle, gently caution you that maybe for the purpose of creating email and or a Moodle account, that they go ahead and maybe just translate the page to get that process done. We wanna get them into the LMS. Once we get them into the LMS, there's all kinds of English instruction and training that we can do with our students. So don't, this is kind of a barrier for some. So I would say the easiest way that we can get our students with email, with good working email addresses and into Moodle or into the LMS is we should take that approach. And then once everybody's there, then we do whatever it is we want to do. Okay. So ESL teachers, fellow ESL teachers, you know, we got to loosen the reins a little bit and just get these folks into the Moodle um, once we're there, then we can then we can do our English instruction. Okay, um, we do have um, a, a couple of handouts that are in the self-paced course that you can share with students. They're very simple, um, step-by-step, um, creating a Moodle account, and then um, a reminder on how to log back into the, your Moodle account. Okay, they're in the self-paced course, and then once I once we get there later on, um, I'll show you where they are. Okay, and then. Just a reminder for people, uh, for all of you as well, is that even though you are a teacher, meaning your job is teacher, job, your job is educator, when you enroll in a Moodle course, your role is student, okay? So you just have to remember that, right? Um, sometimes you think, oh, well, I'm a teacher and I'm in a Moodle course, so I should just be able to do whatever I wanna do, right, because I'm a teacher, but that's not true. So we. Um, normally when you come into, and like when, we're, when we practice today, you're going to come into that practice course as a student, okay, not a teacher. Um, so you are a teacher, and here I mean your role in the course is teacher. Um, when, number one, OTAN makes a copy of a course for you and assigns you as the teacher. So we designate your role as teacher. And when you are a teacher in a course, you have the full range of things that a teacher can do. Um, the other thing is um, you can also ask OTAN to change your role to a teacher. And normally um, we encounter this when um, someone, one of your colleagues has a Moodle course and would like to add you as a co-teacher in the Moodle course. Um, they as the teacher, um, you don't, all of you don't have the ability to make other people teachers in your course only OTAN can do that for you so you need to you know either the teacher who already has the course or the person who's coming into the course you just need to contact us just send us an email and we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and get that set up for you okay okay um, let me pause again Marjorie Blair do we have questions about anything so far I think we're pretty good. Marjorie, do you want to say anything about the the question I just asked you about the teleconferencing or are we going to just 
Uh, there's a question in the Q&A that says, can Moodle do teleconferencing, um, see the faces and talk? Zoom is an LMS, so, or I'm sorry, Moodle is an LMS, which means it's just your um, learning, uh, basically your classroom. Zoom is going to be your uh, communication tool. So um, we do have Zoom installed. We're going to be upgrading to a new site. Um, and there is a plugin installed on there. We're still testing it. Um, it is, uh, you, your account would still be limited to the free version unless you have Zoom for your agency. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. If not, then email us at support and I can try to answer more. Or I'm sorry, support.otan.us. Thanks, Marjorie. And just to um, what you just mentioned. So um, the current, like in the world, the current version of Moodle is 3.8 point whatever it is, whatever you know, version they're on at the moment, but it's 3.8. OTAN, when you go to the adult ed courses site, we currently on, we're behind, we're on version 3.1. So you might, you might read about Moodle and you know, on somewhere else it might say, oh, and by the way, you can integrate Zoom into your Moodle course, blah, 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 or, you know, or maybe another web conferencing program like Adobe Connect, for example. Um, to Marjorie's point, the, I think the particular problem at the moment is because we're behind on the versions, we don't have the full kind of current um, functionality of Moodle at the moment. So you, you may just need to be, a, you, might, um, you might only really be able to put a link to your Zoom meeting in the Moodle course. And then if your students are logged into their Moodle course, they could just click on the link and then they would be, you know, that, that would be another way for them to get to the Zoom room um, that you're using for your web conferencing. But again, because we're some versions behind on the Moodle, um, we may, you may not be able, even though you hear about it, we may not be able to do what you're asking us to do just because we're some versions behind. Our plan at the moment is um, in the spring and summer, um, to upgrade to the current 3.8 version. So unfortunately, we're not there right now, but that's our plan in the next, you know, three or four or six months or whatever it is. Okay. okay. Anthony, can I say something real quick? Yes, please. This is Blair. Um, so Melinda just pointed out, and this is a really good point, and when Anthony was talking about creating your account and the things that you can put in your, uh, I'm creating your course, you could always link out to some type of a service, whether it's a Google Hangout or a Skype link it, within your Moodle course, and that could be the way that you get your class together. But they they do it from the course, it's and then they link out to whatever service you want to use. I don't know if that helped or not. Sorry. No, that's great. Yeah, I think just giving people a sense of you know the possibilities here, you know, because. It seems like everybody's on Zoom, but not everybody's on Zoom. People are using other um, web conferencing programs. So, um, but the premise is, is that you should be able to link to any and all of those uh, services outside of, you know, via Moodle as it were. Okay, um, if there are other questions, so let's move on to uh, navigating around uh, the Moodle course, your Moodle course. And um, in the very beginning, Melinda mentioned in the housekeeping slides, um, I think the, the two last slides had to do with, if you would like, if you understood what she was talking about and if you wanna try this out, you can resize your Zoom window so that you have your, um, it probably would take up about half the screen or so. So if you wanna resize your Zoom window and then with your browser, resize that so they're side by side. So as I'm showing you um, what I'm doing in Moodle, because I'm going to switch over to Moodle in a sec. If you want to be logged into your account and follow along with me and kind of replicate what I'm doing in your own account, then this will be a good opportunity to do that if you understand um, what we were talking about in terms of having these two windows open side by side. If you don't understand that and don't know how to do it, don't worry. Um, you'll, still get the, you'll still get the full effect. Okay. okay. So let's first talk about the navigation block and the dashboard, okay? So just in terms of um, like setting up your profile, your Moodle profile, um, seeing your courses that you're, um, that you're a part of, um, other preferences that you can set up 
in your Moodle account, um, you're going to be using the, na uh, the navigation block and the dashboard to do these things, okay? And then when we switch over to the Moodle in a second, we're also going to talk about blocks as well. Um, there are many blocks that you can have in your Moodle course. You can also collapse these blocks and dot the blocks to free up space. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's switch over. Uh, let me escape out of here for a second. Oh, let me do this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to, let me do this. Okay, so actually I wanted to start at the OTAN website um, again, just to point out what we mentioned before. So open up this resources dropdown on the OTAN website, OTAN.us. Here's the link to California adult education courses right here. You can also click on this bluish button on the right-hand side, CA adult Ed online courses. Um, while I'm here, I also just wanted to point out, if you're not familiar with it already, please go to our COVID-19 field support page. Um, let me just click on that briefly with this a little, a little uh, segue here. Um, that OTAN resource guide that I mentioned, this is the first resources that it, that's available um, for uh, you to take a look at. Um, so this is where the resource guide is. If I mention it again today, this is where you'll find it. So again, you go to the OTAN website, OTAN.us, and just click on this field 19 uh, support button. Okay, so I click on my adult ed, course, uh, adult ed courses button and I come to the California Adult Education Courses website, okay? So um, on the website, some of you already know that there are two ways to log in to the website. So we have this login over here on the right side, we have this login block that you can use. You just put in your username, oops, put in your username, put in your password, and go ahead and log in. If you can't remember your login, um, try this lost password option and see if you can uh, recover your, or reset your password to get back into your login account, uh, sorry, to get back into your Moodle account. But if you are still having trouble getting back into your account, just email us, support at otan.us. Marjorie probably will help you out with that. Um, one note about that is that um, it's entirely possible that some of you created a Moodle account many moons ago, and maybe even have a course or two in your account from many moons ago. Um, periodically, we do kind of a sweep through the uh, list of users in Moodle. And if we notice that people who have accounts have not logged in for some length of time, um, it tends to be a year or more. Um, we sometimes, just in the interest of kind of cleaning things up, we'll go ahead and delete people's accounts. So. If you find yourself in that situation where you're like, oh, yeah, I have an account here, but I can't get into my account, but the last time you were in your account was like two years ago, so it's entirely possible that you don't have an account anymore. Um, you can always email us again, support at OTAN.us. We'll do a check for you to see if we can find any and all accounts for you. Um, it may just be that you use like a different, you know, a different email address and you never thought, oh, yeah, I used that one back in you know, 2017 or whatever it was. So you can always email us um, or, you know, try the lost, the lost password option as well. But this is a block. This login is a login block, okay? You can also up in the upper right-hand corner, just click on the link to log in and it'll bring you to this page as well. So you can log in here, again, username and password. This is also the place, by the way, for your students to go to create a new account. And you probably did that recently if you created an account on the adult ed courses site as well. So you wanna direct your, uh, your students to create new account. And again, we're not gonna talk about creating a new, a new account today. We have a handout about that. Um, I'll share with you later, but um, this is where your students are gonna come, okay? So uh, now I have to remember what we're doing. Oh yeah, okay, so let me log in. Uh, I'm gonna log into my account. And again, if you have your own account, go ahead and log in as well. Okay, um, this is actually my admin account, so it may not look entirely the same as what you're seeing. Um, you will see all of these things that are in blue color. This means that they are currently showing, 
everything that's in a grayish color is currently uh, being hidden. And we'll talk about later how you can do that in your own account, okay? So I wanna point your, or direct your attention to two things. And, okay, I still can't annotate. Okay, so um, over here on the left-hand side is this navigation block. Um, by the way, the um, blocks, uh, we'll talk about this later as well, you can add and take away blocks from your account. The only, I think it's maybe administration as well, but the navigation block, you have no way of deleting this from your account. So just you, if you're trying to do it, you're like, I don't wanna see that navigation block anymore. But this is the one block that you cannot delete from a Moodle page, okay? So um, in the navigation block, you have a couple of things here. You have a link to the dashboard. You also have, um, if you open up this uh, triangle here, you actually can see all of the courses that you are currently enrolled in, okay? So this is a quick way to get to your courses or maybe a particular course, right? I wanna go to the using Moodle course, for example, right? So here's a link right here. Um, there's also this dropdown for the site pages as well. I personally don't spend a lot of time here just because I don't use all of these functions, but you may wanna familiarize yourself with that at some point. Okay, so we have a link to the dashboard on the left, but if we also go up to the upper right-hand corner up here, where our, we should see our name when we're logged in and maybe we've had a picture already, we wanna open up this uh, dropdown as well. And we have some more choices, okay? So here's another link to the dashboard as well. If we want to um, edit our profile, here's the link to that. We can also see grades. So if uh, this is really more for the student, for example, so like this would be a way for the students to get a, uh, get a quick link to the grades for the courses that they're enrolled in, like they can you know, see their progress and all that. Um, there is a messaging system from within Moodle, so you actually can send messages out to your students. And then here's where the preferences are as well. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on preferences, so maybe let's look at that first before we go to the dashboard. So when I click on preferences, um, I'll just point out probably the ones that you're gonna wanna think about periodically. So I can edit my profile. Again, it's the same as this link here, this profile link. I can also do it from here. If I wanna change my password, I can do that. Um, sometimes when you get more involved in Moodle and you have um, a number of forums set up in a course, and for example, like maybe your students, you know, you've asked your students to, um, you know, you pose a question in the forum and then students are responding to the question and doing all that kind of stuff. You do have the option of kind of moderating how the, prep, how the forum posts are coming into your email because you can get, you can have them sent to your email, but sometimes it's so overwhelming. So for example, like maybe you wanna create a forum post digest where you're only getting, you know, kind of the digest for the entire day rather than one by one. Cause one by one, it's gonna fill up your email box pretty quickly. Um, so you can set your preferences for forums here. Um, messaging as well. We won't talk too much about messaging today, but um, you can also set your messaging preferences. So maybe as students are completing assignments, for example, you can get those notifications in your email. But again, they, if you have a lot of students who are doing work kind of in, in a moment, you know, you'll be getting like tons and tons of email. So you may wanna moderate how you set up the messaging that comes into your email. Um, I'll leave the preferences at that. Let me go back to the dashboard. So the dashboard is kind of your personal homepage, as it were. Um, within um, within Moodle. Um, I wanna point out, maybe when we get into other Moodle courses, we'll take a look, kind of a, another look at it, but up here in the upper left-hand corner, um, if, you, if you add a picture, it will show up here. I haven't added a picture to this account, um, but if I did, it would show up here. Um, and then under that, we have what's called the breadcrumb trail or the navigation trail. This is really a, a quick and easy way to get around the Moodle site. So if I wanna just go right back to the homepage, I, I can just click on home and it'll send me back there. Um, once I'm in a course, and we'll, we'll be in a course uh, shortly, but once I'm in a course, this breadcrumb trail is gonna expand. So it's an, this would be a great and easy way to kind of navigate, navigate around your course very quickly as well but I just wanna point out the existence of this breadcrumb trail here. 
Um, on the left hand side, we have a couple of blocks. We have a navigation block. We also have an administration block. On the right hand side, we have a calendar block. We have an upcoming events block. We have a private files block. We have a badges block online. So we have a lot of blocks and it's kind of taking up a lot of real estate. So you have a couple of options with the blocks. So in the upper right hand corner of a block, you should see two icons. Um, a minus icon, which will become a plus icon when you click on it. And then a left um, directional carrot, which will become a right directional carrot when you also click on this one. So you can see that this one has to do with docking the blocks. This one has to do with hiding or collapsing or expanding. So if I click on it, you see it basically collapses this block. If I click back on it, it will expand it. If I click on this doc, um, so I click on it. So I'm not sure whether you noticed, but now it's all the way over on the left-hand side. It's docked. And actually, if I scroll over it, I can see what is normally in the block, right? So maybe, for example, if I dock all my right side blocks. So look how this kind of middle part of the course page now has expanded. And sometimes this is really great. Like sometimes the blocks, you want to keep them around, but you don't want them to take up real estate. So maybe you consider docking them. Um, and then now that kind of middle part of the course really opens up and it's a lot easier to kind of see um, the course, uh, you know, the main kind of the, the, the meat of the course, right? Um, you can also, for, for individual blocks, you can undock them. So you want to click this right carrot or if you have them all at one time, I know down in the lower right hand corner, oops, let me get rid of that. Down in the lower right hand corner of my screen, there's a little icon down here. If I click that, that's gonna re that's gonna undock the blocks and move them all back over to the right hand side. Okay. So again, that's blocks right there. Okay, so the dashboard, again, um, all of your courses. So my courses are here in the navigation block. They're also listed on my dashboard also here all as well, okay? And again, if you see something in blue, it's currently showing on the Moodle site, the Adult Ed Courses site. If it's grayed out, then it is not showing, but it still is visible to you as the teacher or the owner of the course, okay? And we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, okay, let me pause here, Lair, Marjorie, questions? So I was about to answer, this is Blair, sorry. I was about okay. to answer a question about the, um, the Moodle app and how it works on cell phone. Marjorie, or you have looked into that lately. Um, back when I was doing this, I had, in fact, I still have the Moodle app on my phone. I have an iPhone. And if I remembered my password, I could log into it. So it does work and you, you it's not 100%. And maybe Marjorie can address that or you can address that, Anthony, about non-iPhone and how the apps are working? The Moodle, well, Marjorie can talk about this too. The Moodle site is um, built according to responsive design. So you could actually just open up a browser on any phone and go to the adult ed courses uh, .org site. And um, it's responsive design. So it'll, it definitely will have a different look to it. Actually, let me, I think I could actually make this responsive design. Right, so let me see. there we go. Okay, so I'm not sure if you noticed. So currently, um, maybe this is more of like a tablet view, right? So for example, we still have the blocks on the left. We have the blocks on the right. We have the course par um, portion overview in the middle, but the smaller my screen gets, okay, so now look what happened, right? So basically everything is gonna stack up into a row or a, a column, I guess. So I'm first gonna see the, um, the, main, the middle part, the main part of my dashboard, right? And then when I scroll down, okay, so here are my left side blocks, navigation administration. Here are my right side blocks, calendar, upcoming events, private file. So everything is basically gonna stack up into a column view, but um, that should, if you just log into a browser on your phone, whatever, it doesn't matter what device you have, um, and you play around with a little bit, you should be able to get the same kind of column view um, you know, that you would get on your phone. So it's responsive design. Okay, other questions about that? 
I think, I, I, Marjorie, are you okay if I talk about the grade question that Angela's asking? Uh, sure, go ahead. Does anybody, I, so what I'm, I think I'm gonna say this correctly. Um, Angela, you're not gonna be able to upload the grades directly from this Moodle site because this Moodle site is working with all of the different schools. So it's a little bit different setup. If you had your own Moodle site, you might have a direct connection to your ASAP. But here, what you'd probably have to do is download your grades in an Excel um, or a spreadsheet format and then bring them into ASAP that way, or it might have to function independently. Marjorie, feel free to chime in if there's something that needs to be added. Uh, I think that's, I think that is a valid response. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to my slides. And I'm also watching the time here as well. So I'm going to try to maybe zip through this next part here. Okay, so let's continue to talk about the Moodle interface. So um, to make most changes to your course, you're going to want to turn on this button called Turn Editing On. And it's in two places. Um, when we go back to the Moodle course in a minute, we'll see where that is. So um, it's either going to be a button in the upper left-hand corner of your course or in the administration block that's on the left-hand side, it's also a command, turn editing on. Okay. And again, this, this has to do mostly with the content that you want to um, edit, add, take out in your course. Okay. You can also change the look of your course by a different command that's called edit settings. And edit settings is also in the administration block. And um, when we go back to the Moodle course, I'll show you some of the things that you can do when you edit settings. Okay, so when we turn the editing on, um, all of a sudden, all of these icons are gonna appear on your screen in your course. So I wanna talk about some of the main ones. There are many of them, but these are probably the ones that you're gonna focus on first, okay? So there are about three different icons um, that will all allow you to edit. Um, content in your course. So whether it's a section, a resource, an activity, a block, you want to look for either the word edit, the gear um, icon, or a wrench icon. So any one of these should allow you to edit content in your course or edit some of the settings of your course. Um, there's also a little um, circle, uh, question, mark, uh, question mark in a circle, that's the help icon. This appears throughout the Moodle course. And it's really helpful, like if you see something and you're not quite sure you know, what this thing actually does, then typically it'll have this help icon right next to it. When you click on it, it will open up a pop-up window that has more information about that particular item. Um, these are the eye icons. So there's an open eye, and then there's also an eye with a line through it. So remember when I told you that when you're looking at the Moodle course um, some, and you're logged in, Sometimes some of the things appear in blue, like the name of a course might appear in a blue color and some of them might appear in a gray color. So basically, if something is blue, it means that it's been turned on, it's visible, right? People who come to adult ed courses can see it. If it has an eye with a line through it, it means that we've hidden it, we've made it invisible. So we can see it, you know, depending on you know, what you have in your account, you can see it, but it's not visible to your students. And sometimes we get this question in support at OTAN.us and that's like, you know, help oh, Marjorie, I can't see my course. Like I can see it, but my students can't see it. And typically you haven't, you're, you haven't turned the um, eye from the, the eye with the line to the open eye. Um, I'll, we'll show you how to do that in a second, but that's typically the problem. Or maybe you haven't um, changed the command from show to hide in the settings, okay? So if students aren't able to see things, it may be because they're still invisible to them, not to you, but to them. Okay, you have a number of ways to move things around in your course. There's this cross with the four, um, with the arrows pointing in four directions. So that's gonna be your icon that um, allows you to move things. When I say up and down, what I'm basically saying is like from one section, like maybe to a previous section or to a section lower down in your course. Okay, so that's a quick way to move things around. Um, when you're, as you're adding content, you might also see this right pointing arrow that allows you to indent 
um, maybe you want to kind of structure your content, you know, you want some of it indented and some of it not. Um, so this would allow you to indent some of those content items. Um, duplicate is a powerful icon. So it's, you know, instead of kind of having to, maybe you have um, the same kind, maybe you have, uh, Blair gave me a great example, like maybe you set up a quiz, for example, in your Moodle course. It's a 10 question quiz and you plan on using a 10 question quiz for the next, you know, six, eight, 10, 18 weeks or whatever. So you want to keep this kind of the, the structure of your quiz um, without having to recreate the structure all the time. So maybe what you do instead is, instead is you just duplicate the quiz that you first built and then you can use that um, throughout your uh, the remaining sections of your course. But then when I come to week two, I, all I have to do is just change the questions, right? I still have the 10 per, I still have the 10 question quiz set up. I have it grading the way that I want it to be graded. I just, I'm, I'm basically just kind of substituting new questions per week, okay? So this is a powerful um, icon as well. There is a delete icon, it's basically an X. Um, if you happen to, to delete something and you're like, oh, I really want that back, there is, in the administration block, there's a recycle bin, and you should be able to find deleted items there. I don't think that they stay there forever. I think there's a time limit to them, so um, just be aware of that, okay? Okay, one other thing we want to point out is switch role two. Um, it's uh, typically in a block on the left-hand side under navigation and administration. Um, this is a really great tool to use if you want to see the course from the teacher perspective and then switch your role to a student perspective. So you get both those views because they're not going to be the same view. Um, better yet, we actually suggest you having two Moodle accounts. One would be your teacher account, one would be your student account. And then as the student, you can enroll in the, te in the course where you're the teacher and you can do the activities as a student. And then you can see the results as the teacher. And you can, you know, if you, as a student, if you, you know, do the quizzes, do the assignments, get the grades, then as a teacher, you can see what the student is seeing in terms of their grades and feedback and things like that. Um, before we go back, let me just do this other part um, and then we'll switch over to the uh, Moodle course in a second. Okay, then in terms of adding content to your course, we have this thing called the activity chooser. Again, when you turn the editing on, this will appear, this add an activity or resource will appear. And then this will allow you to do a couple of things. You can either add activities. So Moodle um, kind of uh, separates these into two categories. So they call them either activities, which would be like an assignment. Um, it could be a forum. It could be a quiz. Um, it could be a choice, which is kind of like a survey or a feedback tool. So this is more where the students are actually doing something interactive in the Moodle course, okay? Um, versus what they call resources. And this would be more like what you might find in, on a typical website, for example, right? So you're gonna find files there. You're gonna find links to um, other websites. Labels here will allow you to add like uh, multimedia files. So for example, like if you have, um, let's say you have some um, listening files, like some MP3 files, for example, that you want your students to do some listening activities to. So you can use this label resource to add those kinds of resources uh, or those kinds of files, sorry, to your Moodle course. Okay. So you just have to remember, you know, if you're looking for something, you're like, oh yeah, I really want to add this thing to my course. I can't remember where it is. So it's either going to be an activity or it's going to be a resource. And we'll show you how to access that uh, in a second. Okay, and then the other thing too is you also can add blocks to your course. I mentioned that you can, um, you can add blocks, you can delete blocks, you can, so you can manage your blocks as well when you're logged into your Moodle course. Okay, so before we go to the practice, let me just switch back over to the Moodle site. There we go. Uh, let me switch back over to my Moodle site. Okay, so I'm gonna go to a course. Let me go to this blank course here, your blank shell. Okay, so first part is again, turn editing on. So you should see this button in the upper right-hand corner. It's also, in the administration block down here, here's turn editing on. 
So either one of them will get you the same result, okay? So when we turn this editing on, all of a sudden now you see all of these icons appear. So these are the icons that are gonna allow you to add and edit the content that you have in your course, okay? So for example, um, I've already started building this. This is basically a blank shell. I've already started adding some um, topics and some files here to my uh, Moodle course, okay? So um, here, this is one kind of section or topic here, OTAN Tech Talk, July 2019. Here's topic two with an assignment. Here's topic three. I've added two files here. I've added a PowerPoint file. I've added a PDF file. Um, and then I have some blank, um, I have some more topics here that I can fill with other kinds of activities and resources. Okay, so let me go, let's go to topic four, for example, because topic four is blank at the moment. So here's a pencil icon, but here's also that edit drop down. So if I want to edit the topic, for example, maybe I want to give this a different name. Okay, so let me call this like reading activities, for example. Okay. Um, I can put in a little summary of what the students would find here. Here are some activities, dot, 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 okay. Um, and then if I save those changes and I go back to topic four, now we can see here's my new uh, title and then here's a little summary down here, okay. Now I'm getting ready to add some activities, right? So here's that add an activity or resource um, link or button right here. So when I click on this, this opens up that menu that we saw on the slide. So first are the activities, right? And so I see a whole list of activities. Actually, they continue. I have to keep scrolling down to see all of them. But if I click on any one of them, for example, assignment, it's really cool. Actually, it gives you a nice description of what this particular activity is, right? So if you're not quite sure, like, oh, well, should I do this or that? read and see first what it is, you know, what does this particular activity do? And then we can, you know, then maybe you choose that one, right? Or maybe I pick a forum, right? Or maybe I pick a quiz, or maybe I pick a survey, and so on and so on, right? At the bottom of this menu are the resources, okay? So again, maybe I wanna add a file, maybe I wanna create a page, maybe I wanna add a URL, maybe I wanna add that uh, multimedia file there, okay? Once I pick one of those, let me just put the URL, for example, I just click add. That brings me to the page to actually edit that content. So maybe I'll just put in Google, right? Uh, here's the URL, www.google.com. I hope it will work without the HTTPS. Um, I could put in a little description for the students, right? This is a link to da, 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 whatever it is. So we were talking about the Zoom, for example. So maybe this is where the place where you pop in your link to your Zoom room right here. You describe it for the students so the students know, oh yeah, this is where we're gonna meet for our, um, our synchronous meetings. We have a lot of options um, to it. I'm not gonna get into those right now. You can explore those on your own. However, I do wanna point out, so again, here's that little help icon. So if I click on that, it opens up a dropdown with some more information that I can read about. If I'm happy with it, go ahead and save it. Okay, and so now, let me turn the editing off for a second. So now we get more of kind of the student view of it. So here I've added a link to the URL. Um, I would say, you know, when you're adding some of these resources to your class, you want to warn the students, like if you're sending them outside of the Moodle, you probably want to put something to that effect, right? Here is a link to um, our Zoom room, which is, you know, outside of the Moodle course or something like that, right? We want to we wanna be very explicit when we're building these online courses so that the students are not surprised, right? They're not like, oh, well, where am I now, right? Um, so we want to make that very clear for students. Let me just point out also this edit settings. Um, I talked about that. So again, the turn editing on is when we want to kind of focus on the content part of the course, which is in the middle part here, right? But we also have this option to edit settings. So if I open this up, um, this, is kind of, this is more of the look of our course, right? Kind of the organization, um, shell organization of our course. Let me just point out that breadcrumb trail again. So again, look at the, the deeper we get into a course, the, um, the more items that appear in the breadcrumb trail. So from here, 
this is a really easy way to navigate around Moodle, right? We could instantly go back to the home page if we wanted. I could go back to um, the home page of this particular course. Um, no, I could go back to the particular home page of this course, BBS by here, okay? Um, this is typically where, stu where teachers get hung up is like, help, my students can't see my course. We have to change this from high to show. Show will turn it from gray to blue, and then once it's blue, it's also visible on adult ed courses as well, okay? So that's where we um, uh, adjust that setting. I'm gonna leave it uh, hidden at the, for the moment, okay? Um, we can add some description, you know, what is this course? This, once we make the course live, this summary will also show up on the Moodle site, Adult Ed Courses site, so that if I'm a student and I'm looking at all these courses under my school, and I'm, they're different courses, different teachers, but maybe, you know, you want to say um, this is Anthony's uh, ESL course for beginning high students or whatever you want to say, right? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. And then this will be visible on the adult ed courses site so that if I'm a student and I'm looking at the description, I can see, oh, yeah, this is my teacher's course, right? Versus all the other courses that are in there. Okay. Um, let me just um, show this. Uh, actually, let me show this one, course format. So you have a couple of options, again, with the look of your course. So currently, we're using a topics format, which is topic one, topic two, topic three, topic four, da, 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 da. but we could also change it to a weekly format as well. And maybe um, you would like to, or you would rather that the um, sections of your course be um, use weeks as a title. So maybe week one, March one to March seven, week two, March 8 to March 14, week three, March no, I'm lost, 15 to 21, and so on down the list, right? So you also have that option for your format. Um, and then the number of sections, you can also adjust how many sections you want to have up to 52. I think they do 52 because they're 52 weeks in the year. But um, you could also shorten it to just, maybe I just want 10 topics, like I wanna try to keep my course pretty tight. But if you do have a number of sections, you might consider um, spacing them out to different pages. So maybe the first page would be topics one to 10, page two would be topics 11 to 20, and so on and so on. So again, this is kind of where you can make some of those adjustments to the look of a course, okay? Um, make sure you save, and then your saves will be changed. And then you can see now, I think I had a much um, longer list or um, a longer number of topics. So I've shortened that to now, it's just gonna be 10 topics, right? One more thing too, um, let me just point out if I turn the editing on, um, is, uh, where is it? Oh, okay. So for example, <clears throat> remember we talked about the eyes, right? So if I, some teachers like to organize their course where maybe they put all of their, they put all of their course material into the course, but they want to only show it when the class is working on it, right? So maybe I just want my focus, I'm sorry, I want my students to only focus today on topic one, or I want my students to focus on topics one and two. If I hide all of the other topics, then they won't show until I make them visible. So you can kind of manage the flow of your course one of the ways you can do that is with by hiding these topics and then opening them up when you want the students to focus on them, okay? So that's where that I icon appears. You can also, here's that X, you can also delete topics as well, okay? I think I'll leave it with that um, on the editing. Um, Marjorie, Blair, any questions about that before we switch over to the practice? And I'm sorry, I've kind of run over time on the show and tell, but we'll still have time for practice. So. Marjorie, Blair, any questions? No, I think I'm good. I, um, I mean, real quickly, we can answer a couple of these questions while you're doing that. Someone asked, can Moodle support videos? Um, absolutely, but you're going to want to get your videos stored somewhere else and then link out to the videos. So they're either on YouTube or like if you want to use Learn360 videos, you'll link to those videos. You won't be able to upload videos into Moodle just because of the size that's a OTAN thing. <clears throat> Moodle can handle any kind of file that you give it. So, 
uh, Marjorie, do you see any other questions? Uh, let's see. What's the file size that they can upload? I just answered it. I think right now it's 10 megabytes. Okay. So most, I mean, that's going to cover most files. Uh, most, yeah, most things, right? Yeah, um, yes, sorry. I, I did notice, um, I did upload the, the, um, the PowerPoint and the PDF files to the course that we were just in, my blank shell. Um, it didn't, it took a little time, so just be patient. Like if you have PowerPoints or PDFs or other kinds of files, um, just be patient. Everybody's on the internet at the moment. Things are taking a little bit longer than normal. Um, but they do, my files eventually loaded into my course, so it just, it's not instantaneous. So we just need to be, we just need to take a deep breath when we're doing some of this editing to our course. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I want to, let's do some practice. I want to have all of us kind of go through um, a practice course and see some of the things that we've been talking about so far. So the path to get to the practice course is if you started adult ed courses, and I'll show you how we get there. We're gonna, um, you'll notice that all of the, we call them categories, but basically all the names of the schools and such are listed alphabetically. Um, so we wanna go to all the way to letter T. I think you have to go over to page two to get there, but you should see the category for training courses. And then when you open up that training courses category, there should be a course in there. It's called, it actually has a much longer title, but I've called it Moodle 3.1 Practice Course. So as we go through this course, you're gonna experience this as students. As we go through the course, I want you to think about what you're seeing and experiencing as a student. And then if you have questions about like, you know, the particular items, um, what we'll do is we'll go through the course and then we'll circle back to those questions. Um, if we don't answer them kind of in the moment, we'll get back to them um, that way. So again, I'm gonna go back out to, and I'm actually gonna do this myself. Let me open Chrome here. So let me go to Adult Ed Courses. So again, what I'm saying is you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oh, actually, they're showing. Okay. So here's Training Courses. Oh, did I put it under? There we go. Okay. So I clicked on Training Courses. And then, oh, it's in the sandbox, that's why. Okay, so you should see this Moodle 3.1 practice course. So I'm gonna click on this. And I'm actually not logged in, so you have to be logged into Moodle. I'm actually gonna log in with a different account. I'm gonna log in with my teacher student account, if I remember correctly. I'll log in. It's working, 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 working. And if you're having trouble getting into the course, um, put that into the chat. Marjorie and Blair are monitoring the chat as well. Oh, internet, cooperate, please. Cooperate, please. If this doesn't work, I'll just switch back over to my admin. Internet, I love you. In these down moments, I tend to sing and hum. So if that, I'm sorry if I offend anyone with my musical non-talent. Okay, so maybe what I will do while that is working is switch over to, I'm gonna go back to my admin course then in the interest of time. Okay, um, so let me go back to the 3.1 course. Okay, now, oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, folks, um, again, you know, we're, so we're enrolled in a course, we're students, we're not teachers, we're students in the course, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you do a number of um, activities in this course. And you'll notice, I just wanna point out first before we get started is that um, you'll see that these icons um, that are to the left of the content items, they all have different looks to them. Here's like a paper icon, Here's a, um, a piece of paper with a book lying down. Um, this is for the assignment. If I scroll down a little bit more, I see a piece of paper with the globe in front of it. This is the, um, the URL activity. If I keep scrolling, I see the quiz icon. So the, the, um, the more that you're in Moodle, you and your students are in Moodle, these icons will start to look familiar to you. So you'll know, oh, if I see the piece of paper with the red check mark, 
then I know that we're going to be taking a quiz right now. Okay. It's always helpful to make things as explicit as possible in the online environment, but the, the icons are meant to be a cue for you. Okay. So you'll want to get started with the sign in activity. And I guess let me see what's happening with my teacher course. Still logging in. Okay. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have all of you go ahead and get started with the sign in. And you'll notice, very interestingly enough, that um, this Moodle 3.1 Creative Course website sign in is actually a Google Doc. And you're like, what? A Google Doc? Hold on a second. We're not using Google. But we are using Moodle to add these external resources into our Moodle course, right? So um, yeah, this is kind of the power of the LMS, right? We can, all of these tools that we've been learning about in the last month, um, it's, you know, we can figure out ways to actually bring these tools into the Moodle course. And it's a really great principle to try to keep our students in the Moodle course as much as we can, okay? So um, go ahead and fill out the, the um, Google form. And Marjorie and Blair, let me know if anything's happening that I need to know about, okay? But you're gonna fill out that form. And then once you submit the form, I'll just go ahead and do this, Anthony, Burek, B-U-R-I-K, email address, OTAN, A-B-U-R-I-K at OTAN.us. And what was the last question? What is the name of your agency? Uh, OTAN. Okay, once you submit that, okay, your response has been recorded, okay, then we can go back to the, we can actually, if we're following the breadcrumb trail, we can actually go back to 3.1 practice, which is the home page um, for this course, and then we should be able to do assignment number two. Okay, um, we've set up this course a little differently than other courses you might experience. Basically, what we've done is we've created um, we've con we've created conditions to the activities. So you basically have to do the activities in order, and then once you finish one activity, it gets registered as completed, and then you are able to do the next activity. Okay, in that way. Um, let me pause. So all of you keep, keep going. Like if you finish the sign in, then go ahead and go to the next one, the activity. Um, Blair and Marjorie, let me know if you have any questions about anything or if people have questions in the chat. I just think people liked your humming. <laughs> <laughs> um, the well, other thing that's uh, cool, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we got positive feedback. <laughs> Good. The other thing is I added an online users block because I wasn't sure if people were really in the course yet. So I may have missed that. Um, so that's down there too. Just wanted to throw that out at you. Okay. Cool. okay. So maybe what we'll do is um, as you all are working through um, the activities, and again, so we're all or all of you are logged in as students currently. So you're doing this, you're doing these activities as students in a course. Um, you know, imagine that Blair and Marjorie and I are the teachers of the course. So we're the ones who we started with a blank shell, and <clears throat> we customized this course to add the activities, you know, in the order that we wanted, and to create the conditions, you know, to go from one activity to the next activity to the next activity, and so on and so on. Um, and then, you know, we're using a variety of activities in this course. So again, we had a set, we had a page to start off. Sorry, we had a, um, uh, I think it was a page. Yeah. A page to get started or maybe it was, no, it was a page. Yeah. I was a page first. Then we moved to an, an assignment. So you can practice doing an assignment activity. Then after that will be the website activity. So that's going to take you to. Um, that's actually going to take you to the um, Technology and Distance Learning Symposium webpage on the OTAN website. And then, so you have a few questions there. Um, after you finish that, you're going to take a short quiz. Okay. After that, you're going to do the choice activity. So it's kind of like a survey. Um, you have the option in Moodle of either setting up a choice or a survey. 
but a survey tends to be a little bit more unforgiving than a than a choice. So maybe if you just want to do um, some simple, you know, questionnaires or surveys um, where you can get some, you know, feedback. Like maybe for, I was thinking this morning, maybe you have some reading assignments in your class that students are doing. But you want to get some feedback, like did they like the reading? Was you know they, maybe the level of difficulty of the readings? Um, maybe some of the um, you know assignments that they practiced after they did the reading. So you, choice is a nice way to get some really easy feedback from your students um, on how they're doing in the online course itself. So there's that activity. We also have a forum um, set up, a discussion forum. Um, Discussion forums are nice as well. I mean, you can structure them in so many different ways. Um, you could do it, you know, you, you could actually make it a graded assignment, for example. Well, I shouldn't use the word assignment. Assignment. You can make it a graded activity so that, for example, like maybe you pose a question as a teacher in a discussion forum and you're grading your students on their response to your question. And then maybe, um, I know it's very popular to sometimes ask students to respond to other student posts. So maybe they have to do, um, maybe for example in a forum, a student has to do one original post and then they have to do a response to, a response post to another student. And then they'll be graded on those two, um, on those two posts. And you can also, I really like Moodle too. I mean in other LMSs you can do this in Google you know, classroom and canvas and such where we also add um, like a rubric so that the students can actually see what it is they're getting graded on. Um, that's really handy because then students, you know, they really, we want students if they have a sense of what they're being asked to do to, and again, we're trying to make it as explicit as possible. Um, you know, they also know, okay, well, we're going to be looking for these things in your post, right? We're going to be looking for not only the content of your post, but we're going to be looking for your grammar and your punctuation and your you know, vocabulary and all this kind of stuff. So um, we can add that kind of information into the form as well. Um, at Anthony? the very, oh yeah, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, really quickly, we got a couple of questions. Um, actually the same question. Can you show one more time how to get to this page as yes. a student? Okay, so let me go Thank back. You. Yes, let me go back to, let me see if my Chrome, uh, my Chrome is still thinking about the internet. So let me see if I, let me just go and see, maybe it was a, a blip in the matrix here. Okay, so again, if I'm at California Adult Ed Courses, adultedcourses.org, I wanna scroll all the way down. So we have the categories basically alphabetized. So we wanna go to training courses, click on training courses, and then you're gonna click on Moodle 3.1 practice course. Now, if you're not already logged into your Moodle account, it's gonna prompt you to log into your account. But once you're logged in, it might give you a, um, I'm not sure, yes, okay, perfect. Oh, now it's working, okay. So when I first come to the course, we have it as self-enrollment. So you just go ahead and enroll me. And then you should come right into the course. Tomorrow, I think because we're short on time, tomorrow for part two, I do want to spend some time talking about enrolling students because teachers also have a lot of questions about, well, okay, so I have this course, now how do I get my students into the course? So we'll talk about enrollment options tomorrow as well. Um, we don't really have time to talk about it today in depth, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. But the way we set up this course in terms of enrollment was we basically said it's kind of just a self-enrollment option. So if you come to that um, if you're on the Adult Ed Courses site and you are directed to the link to your course, once you click on the course, you just have to enroll yourself, self-enroll, and then you're automatically in the course. And you should, you should actually see that if you look in my courses, you should now see that course added to your list of my courses. So the short name for this course is 3.1 Practice rather than the long name. So there's a long name and there's a short name. As a teacher, you can fix, oh, well, I'm, in, I'm a student right now. But in the administration block, you can fix that. You can, um, you can rename um, your course. Well, you can create a short name for your course that will show up a lot um, easier in your breadcrumb trail. So that's where it's showing up. 
but it also now should show up in my courses because you've been you've self enrolled yourself in that course. Okay, Blair, Marjorie, other questions? They need the password for the quiz. Okay, so the password is the word Apple, A-P-P-L-E, all lowercase, A-P-P-L-E for the quiz. So we're at take a quiz and then choice and then form and then a handout. Okay, perfect. Okay, other questions as we're working? Blair, Marjorie? Hmm. I'm seeing someone saying that they completed the web activity, but they don't have a check mark saying that, the, that they've completed it. Okay. Right. So, so Go ahead, that, you talk. Is that, are they talking about the webs, the URL one? Correct. Okay. So I think once you just click on that link and then come back, it should have checked. Yeah. I don't know, I'll go look and see. What yeah, because I'm, like, I just enrolled in this course. So it could be that. So Blair, were you saying, yeah, for example, like the checkbox is only showing for the first one and it won't be clicked until I actually do it. So maybe, maybe initially the person didn't see the checkbox, but it just hasn't, they need to go back to the course again to see it. Well, they said that they clicked, she said that, um, Jacqueline said that they clicked on the web activity, but they don't have a check mark saying that they've completed the activity. Oh. Okay. So if you go through it, is anyone else having that problem? Well, but people are ask, but people have gotten to the quiz, which is the next activity. So, so I'm only wondering she's having it, yeah. Yeah. I could do it. Let me do it. I'm actually in the course, so let me do this quickly. Let me see if I can catch up because I think I know what some of the answers are already. Okay, so somebody said they checked it off them, themselves. So ah. it may be a manual check off. So try okay. that, Jacqueline. See if you can check it. If it's a, a solid box, you the student check checks it off. If it's a, a dashed box, it uh, Moodle checks it off. So maybe that's mm. what's going on. Okay, maybe that's the issue. Okay, what's the question again? What do you teach? Have you ever taken online expectations? I'll just say, um, as we're working here um, for folks to have done the assignment, um, which was um, in the beginning. So another possibility on the assignment was you could actually, for example, like upload a file. So like if you have a handout, like a, a worksheet or something, you could add that um, as, you know, something to, for students to work on. And then they could, they could complete the worksheet, for example. Um, if you set it up or if it's set up as like a fillable form, that would be good because then they would do their work on the computer. Um, then they could basically save that completed um, handout or, wor or worksheet. And then they have the option to upload it into the assignment block. So that's another possibility for people. Like if you have things that you want students to work on, like a worksheet, for example, um, you know, you have to set it up. You have to set it up to allow for students to upload files, but they also can upload files as an assignment, and then you can grade those um, in that way as well. So that's another possibility. So I'm just going to say one yes, two no, three maybe. Submit that. Submit the assignment. Yes, I want to. Okay. So I should be done. Go back to the uh, okay, so now I do the website activity, opens up a window. Oh, maybe that's why, um, Blair. Look at the different bo the box. So the uh, previous yes, box, yes, yes, one yes, is yes. a manual checkoff and uh, the other is a Moodle checkoff. 
Got it. Yes. And that check off you have to be kind of careful with because it doesn't necessarily mean like with even the Moodle one, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the student has gotten a particular grade or anything like that. It just means that they've done what it is that you've asked them to click on. Doesn't mean that they watch a 30 minute video. So mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind is that Moodle is not, you know, they can't track everything. They're just giving you an idea of where the student's gone. Right. Unless it's a test and then Moodle's extremely powerful. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I wonder because we're not doing the activity in Moodle, like we're not actually, you know, not like the assignment that we just did or the form we did or the pay or the um, the page that we finished on the first in the first two, maybe that's why we're getting that different box where people are just saying, yeah, I finished this activity. So. Um, somebody asked how to complete the reflection, which is, I think is the last activity, Anthony, if you want to jump down there, okay. it might be easier for you to answer that one. By the by, TDLS, March 6 and 7, some of you were with us. God, it seems like <laughs> ages ago. Years, given our, years, years ago, ago. Given our current situation, our current status in life. Okay, so I've checked the box, do the quiz. Attempt the quiz. Password is Apple. Oops. A P P L E. A P P L E. I should know. I came up with it. Uh, uh, what time did everything begin? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, Nine a.m. Closing at two thirty. No, seven thirty. Uh, keynote was I think at nine. Lunch was twelve thirty. Check. Yay! Next page. Uh, false check. Next page. It doesn't sign up. I don't know. So I was there. Had a great time. Uh, our friends at Charles A. Jones. I, I saw Angela Hatters here. Hi, Angela. Thank you for hosting TDLS, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Submit. Submit. Done, done, done. Um, great. Back to the course. Okay, so we're in the forum. Where are we here? Oh, sorry, I guess we're done. Okay, oh, now I gotta make a choice. Uh, which continents have you visited? Oh, North America, duh. Um, yes, never been south of the equator, although I've made it all the way around the world. Um, oh, and then I can see what everybody else has said. Very interesting. Okay. Um, okay, so let me get back to the course, back to the forum. Okay, so now we're in the forum. Oh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to post on. <laughs> what was the question, Flair or Marjorie? <laughs> reflection time. Yes, reflection time. I'm sorry, I was in the middle of, someone's having trouble um, with the web, act. they took the web activity, so you'll need to make sure that once you do the assignment, that you submit the assignment, and it's a couple of steps. Are you sure, you, you know, you click submit, you, you type the information in, you click submit, and then it's going to say, are you sure, are you, are you ready to actually submit? I think that that might be the problem. Uh, and Carrie, you don't have to do the activity, but if you don't finish, go through the, you can do the activities later. It's just, we were trying to show you, give you the experience of what it's like to be a student so you could see how you could potentially set your course up in Moodle, so. Um, so I'm in the reflection time and I was able to post my reflection. Um, it might have been, it's a little, um, Maybe people just needed a little bit of orientation to this. So um, Marjorie, in this case, Marjorie's post at the top of the reflection time is the, is the original post that would come from the teacher. So it, it doesn't have any words in it, so it's a little bit deceiving. It's like maybe we should have put a, you know, a direction or two in here. But basically, once we reply to this post as the student, then... And I could actually, I think, do another one too. Um, here is my second post. Okay. 
So, and you have a lot of options on the post, like how you set it up. Like you, it could just be a, a discussion forum where you only allow students to respond to the original post and that's it. Like you don't allow them to um, respond to other people's posts, for example. Um, I think there's also an option where maybe you don't even have to, Blair, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe you would only see your, even though all of the students are responding to the original teacher post, as the student, you might, yeah, <clears throat> sorry, we might limit the view so that I can only see my response. I can't see the responses of the other students. I mean, there. I think you have a lot of options when it comes to the to the discussion forum and how you set it up and how much access you allow and things like that. You absolutely do, Anthony. And if you yeah. look right now, you can see, we can all see that people are successfully submitted to the forum. Yes. One of my favorite forums um, was to use the one that, um, oh, I, I, gosh, I think it's question and answer, where you read what, what you're supposed to write about, you put your answer in, and you can't see any of the other students' answers until you've submitted your answer. Mm, okay. So that's I mean, different different forums for different ideas, but I really I like that one. Yeah, so it's actually that we that's a kind of condition on the forum, right? So sort of like the way we've structured the course, we can actually create that condition for this in this case for the discussion forum. So that's well, it's a that. different yeah, it's a different. You can do that too, but it's a there are I think three or four different forum types. Yes. Yeah. So I, yes, I think I yes I understand what you're saying now. Sorry, a little yeah. slow. That's okay. Okay, so then I finished that uh, post to the forum. Okay, um, the very last thing is um, um, that there, we have a, OTAN over the years has actually um, developed a um, kind of a, a Moodle handout that covers a lot of the basic topics that we've talked about today, plus um, some exercises for practice and things like that. We are, um, the uh, self-paced course that I mentioned before, we are trying to um, basically load that handout content into a self-paced course. That's what we're currently working on at the moment. And again, we're building the plane as we're flying it um, type of thing. But what we've talked about today, when I give you the link to that self-paced course today, um, everything that we've talked about today, you will find in the self-paced course. Um, it's similar content to um, what you'll find in the handout as well, although the handout is older. So I've done, I've already gone ahead and edited, or I've, I've made some changes to some of the content. Um, and in time, everything in that self-paced course will be the most current version of the, um, you know, the material that we cover in the training. So that's kind of what we're also, what we're also working on at OTAN in term, in addition to, you know, eventually upgrading to the 3.8 as well. Um, okay, I want to do just a time check. We're at 1140, and I know that people are probably still working their way through the activity. I know that Melinda really wants us to be done by noon, if not a few moments before. So, um, go back to my slides for a second. I'm just going to pause and see what we have left here. Practice, return to the course notes. Anthony, can I answer yes. a question? Yes, okay. please. So I, I want to just make sure, Gail, I hope you're listening to me. I know there's a lot going on. So you have, um, your question is regarding, uh, you have uh, a lot of students working in different units in the uh, Putting English to Work courses, which all, so there are 24 units in the course. Can I do that with one click. So I'm thinking you want, I mean, you can have, okay, can I do it with one click or can I do it by unit? Not for each individual assignment, which would take forever. I have three putting English to work courses, so an easy method would be best. I think I'm understanding the question and I'm now I'm wondering if I can answer it. Um, <laughs> can can we set up a conditional that a unit opens up? I think so. I think you can have it as either an individual 
resource or activity can open up, but I think you can also, can you have Moodle set up a whole unit? And I'm not, I'm not sure of that. Does anybody else know the answer to that question? So Blair, if, if I'm understanding, I think sometimes we get this question because basically, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember her, was it Helen? I can't remember what her name was. Gail. Gail, I don't know why I thought of Helen. I'm sorry. I think to Gail's point, I think sometimes we get this question, if I'm understanding the question correctly, and that is, right, you have this course where you have a group of students and rather than, we're not working as a group, working our way together through the course. Everybody is basically all at different points, right? Some are at the beginning, unit one, some are in unit seven, some are in unit 12, some are in unit 24. And I think the question is basically, can, Mo can Moodle personalize it such that if I'm student on topic or unit one, I'm only looking at topic one, but if I'm student at unit seven, I'm only looking at unit seven. Is that the question? Because that's what I'm hearing or that's what I'm thinking of because I think, because what, because basically the question is, can I personalize Moodle such that each student is where they are in the course and only focusing on what they're working on at the moment and not being distracted by all the other units in the course. Is that the question? I, you know, I'm not real sure. I'm thinking maybe, uh, Gail, if you could type again and clarify a little bit. I don't, because is it that you want to, so if Blair has finished the first three units and I'm working in unit four, you want me to only see unit four and, and unit one, two, and three are now hidden. And Anthony's in unit seven and he can only see unit seven. He can't see one through six and then the next through 24. Um, that's a little more complicated and no, that's not the question. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, at least we we're, at least we're clarifying the question. <laughs> so let me let me do this. Um, so you have twenty four units, and within each unit you have X number of activities. You could one time go through, and you could have each like we did in the practice course. You could have each conditional that they're not going to get see the next one until they've completed whatever one they're on. So if it's one unit one activity six they're not going to see unit two until they finished all of that so that is a pos i mean you can do it that way but i'm not sure that that's the right answer either so we'll wait and hear from you further before i keep just talking um so blair and marjorie so um again i'm watching the clock here so i think let's do this um probably we're at a point where maybe some folks have finished and others are still working on it um you everyone is in, enrolled in this course at the moment so if you're not finished right now you certainly can go back later and finish the activities and see you know see what it is you missed but i'd like to maybe switch back to our slides and finish up for today um i notice i see the questions are also coming into the q a as well so We'll, I think um, we can make a copy of the questions from the Q&A and then tomorrow, if, if we all come back tomorrow, um, we can start with those questions like as a kind of review um, and then we can head into the content for tomorrow. If you're not gonna be here tomorrow, you can always email us support at otan.us and um, if you have a Moodle question, we can also address it that way. But I think in the interest of time, I'd like to just um, circle back to the slides and maybe take the next five minutes or so to finish today. And then, um, then I'll turn it over to Melinda for the final housekeeping and then we'll reconvene tomorrow, okay? Okay, so um, I'm gonna circle, let me see actually what I, yes, okay. So um, I just wanna say one more thing about about our adult ed courses.org. So actually maybe let me switch back to my live screen here. Okay. Um, again, I'm following the breadcrumb trail. I'm just going back to the home page. Um, oh, I'm in the well, that's okay. I'm in my admin view, but that's well, actually let me switch over to teacher view so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. So when you're Back on the home page, you'll notice these top three categories here, developed courses, shared courses, 
And then we also have a EL Civics shared courses for those of you working in ESL and EL Civics. Um, let's take a look at the shared courses for the moment, but I certainly um, encourage you to look at what else is in the other two categories. But you'll see here that um, these are kind of the off the shelf courses that I mentioned at the beginning of the, our time today. So you can see that we have a variety of courses in the different subject areas and we have samples of them. So these are open. Once you're logged into your account, you are free to go ahead and self enroll in any of these sample courses. Um, let me go ahead and let me go into the uh, PET one, for example. Okay, so it gives me the option. I just go ahead and self enroll like I just did for the practice course, the 3.1 practice course. So let's say I'm an ESL teacher and I'm looking at this PET course and I'm like, oh yeah, gosh, this course looks really fantastic. So um, now what you're looking at is not the actual course. You're looking at a sample of the course. You as the teacher can't do anything with this sample course. All you can do is kind of view it. But over on the right hand side, we have this course request block, right? So basically, you go ahead and click on the link to fill out a form. And what you're doing is once you, fill, once you um, open the link, it's going to open up this Google form. Basically, this is your request for a copy of the sample. Sorry, well, you're actually requi requesting a copy of the master course. So we will make a copy of the PET master course and we will put that into your account and assign you as the teacher role. We're going to assign the role of teacher for you so that you will be the teacher in that copy of that PET course. So that's the request form that you fill out to get the, those kind of off the shelf courses or copies of the off the shelf courses into your account. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, I'll just say that when people come to the Adult Ed Courses site and they look at this, these three categories, and they say, oh my gosh, I want this and 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 this, and it ends up that they want like eight or 10 or 12 courses. At this particular moment in time, we are going to strongly discourage you from requesting eight to 10 to 12 courses. We're going to ask that you pick the one course that you really, really want, that you would like to get started with, that you can also manage the management of the course and start with the one request, maybe two, okay? But try to, try to aim for one, okay? Um, as you get a feel for the first one or two courses that you have in your account, then come back to us and say, okay, can I also get, you know, A and B and C. But again, try to put in the requests like maybe one or two at a time. Typically when we have these trainings, all of a sudden Marjorie then has like a hundred or so requests for courses. And um, if people are asking for six or eight at a time, that just kind of bogs down the system. So try to aim for like the one you, or that you really want, maybe two, and ask for those courses first. Okay, but that's how you that's how you put in the request to OTAN. Okay, if you do want, um, sorry, wrong, wrong window. If you do want um, the blank course shell, you can always send an email to um, support at OTAN.us, and you know we'll get it in the support box, and then Marjorie will go ahead and get that blank course shell to you as well. Okay, so for more information, if you don't come back tomorrow, I just want to make sure you, that you do have this information. So a great resource is from Moodle itself docs.moodle.org. Um, it's basically their documentation site. It has a lot of information on many, many things about Moodle. Okay, so we, we, re um, we recommend that you take a look there. Now the self-paced Moodle training course, again, you're free to enroll in this course right now. I think I've hopefully set it up correctly. Um, I may need to fix that in a minute. Um, but if you go back to the training, So again, click on training. And then we have this self-paced Moodle training course. So go ahead and click on that. Yes, I did it right. Okay. And go ahead and enroll in that course. So um, again, what we talked about today is the first part of your Moodle course. 
um, uh, sorry, the self-paced course. So the, here are the handouts that I mentioned, handout how to create a Moodle account, handout how to log into your Moodle account. You are free to download these, share these with your students um, to help them get into the Moodle course, okay? Today we talked about navigating around, we talked about the Moodle interface, we talked about editing a course section, kind of the basics. So that's what's currently there at the moment, but we're gonna be, or probably I, I should, but the royal we are going to be adding more content in the coming week or so, okay? But everybody is free to enroll in the self-paced course if you wanna go back and cover um, or re, um, not re, study again what we talked about today.